Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Home Automation with Arduino and the Amazon Echo. And this is part four in a four part series. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out Forstronics.com. All right, let's get started. So if you've been watching this series, you know in parts one and two, we looked at how to use the Echo to control a home appliance or device. And we used the light for an example. And then in part three, we started setting up the Echo to monitor the state of our washer so we know when our washer is done. So we can ask Alexa, is the washer running or is the washer done? So on and so forth. And in part four, what we're gonna look at here is the hardware setup, the Arduino, the measurement circuit, the current transformer, as well as the code to communicate the washer state to the font cloud. As a reminder, here's the setup. And in part three, you know, we talked a lot about the Echo and the AWS, as well as the SparkFun font cloud. And we sent some simulated data. Here in part four, we're gonna get into the hardware that you're seeing down here, the current transformer. I used a signal conditioning circuit, which I'll talk about in a little bit for the AC output coming from the current transformer. And then I used the Arduino Maker 1000. And as I mentioned in Part three, you know, I originally wanted to use the Node MCU because the Maker 1000 is a much better measurement or much better ADC. I decided at last minute to go with the Maker 1000 because I needed pretty good resolution to uh, monitor the washer. I will point you to a video series where you could get some code if you wanted to use the Node MCU instead. And as a reminder, the, you could get an Arduino Maker 1000 at Forstronics.com. I also have the signal conditioning circuits at Forstronics.com. All right, let's look at a video seeing the whole thing in action. Okay, what we're looking at right here is the current transformer. So this is the power cord for my washer. So we're down in my basement and I'll warn you, it's going to be, the video is going to be a little dark and please don't judge me. I think my basement's a little dirty. But basically this is the power cord and what I did is I used a knife to open up the, the, the covering and I put the current transformer around the black wire which is the hot wire in the US for home power. Just a note, you want to make sure you get the current transformer just around one wire because if you put it around the whole cord you're essentially going to be canceling out the measurement you're trying to make. So there's the current transformer, it's around the black wire in the washer. So now we're going to back away. I have a towel with the Maker 1000. And then this is the signal conditioning circuit, which I'll talk about more. But essentially it is a filter as well as a op amp. And here I'm using the red and white wire from the current transformer. So it's coming in here. It gets filtered. It also gets clipped in the sense that it's going to cut off the negative voltage on this because the Arduino can only measure positive voltage. And once again, when I say voltage, the current creates a voltage equivalent waveform that we use to measure with the ADC. But then it's connected to the Maker 1000. The Maker 1000 is connected to my home Wi-Fi. So right now the washer is off. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation if the washer is on. The washer is off. All right, Alexa correctly knew that it was off. So I'm gonna hit the power button here and get my uh, LG washer going. So I actually do have a real load of clothes in there. I'm not just wasting. So I'm gonna press start and the washer is gonna go. You can see it's spinning at the bottom. And then what I wanna do here is I'm gonna put the camera on the Maker 1000. You can hear the water in the background. And I want to wait for the LED to flash because that's when I know it connected to the cloud and sent some data. So I think it's coming up here soon. There it goes, the LED flashed. So I, I wait a minute because I'm waiting for the washer to quiet down before I ask Alexa if it's on. So just bear with me. We can see it's spinning. It's starting to load some water in there. And then here we go. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation if the washer is running. The washer is running. All right. And the washer is running. So we can see Alexa got it right. 
So let's look at the hardware setup in more detail for the measurement we made, because that was actually one of the tough things about this project. Okay, here's a closer look at the hardware setup. Here's the current transformer. It's around the black wire and my washer cord. Then here's the signal conditioning circuit. I'm just gonna talk about this in more detail in one second. And then here's the Arduino Maker 1000. And so I have another video series basically a signal conditioning video series. I'll have the name of it at the end where I go over this design that I'm showing here. So there's two op amps here. This first section of this circuit is basically a low pass filter, a Salem key low pass filter. From If you saw that video, you'll remember that the caps were different because I was working at a lower frequency. Here I wanted the frequency to be a little higher. I wanted it to be 32 kilohertz. And so I'm using 15 picofarad caps here for C2 and C1. R1 and R3, I left, left at 33K. And the whole idea here is any frequency components above this will be highly attenuated by this circuit. So we wanna clean out the high frequency noise. Then this is just an amplifier section. So in this, I believe, what is it? R4 is actually a variable resistor. So it's right here, variable resistor, so I can actually adjust the gain. And one of the main things I'm using this for is not only does it do the filtering and I can control the gain, I actually don't have much gain when I configured it for this purpose. But another thing that's nice about this is, you know, if, if you're familiar with op amps, if you just feed in a positive voltage and no negative voltage, the negative side of the op amp power supply is connected to ground it'll clip any negative voltage. So what happens is this is AC, AC goes positive and negative. So we get an equivalent voltage waveform that goes positive and negative, but we don't want to apply negative voltage to our Maker 1000 because it can't handle it and we could damage it. So what's nice about this circuit is it actually clips off the negative part of the signal. And the negative part of the signal is really just, you know, a mirror image of the positive part. So we don't need that part when we're doing our measurement. As I mentioned, I have a video for this. I'll, I'll give you the name at the end, but it's an open source project, just like all my projects. So the information for this circuit is on GitHub. Okay, so here's our circuit or here's our hardware setup. Let's look a, a little closer at what the current profile of the washer looks like. So what you're looking at is three oscilloscope captures. This first one is the washer is off. So even when the washer is off, you can see we still get a current signal. And once again, because our we're measuring this on the output of the signal conditioning circuit, so that's why we're just seeing these positive pulses. So this is actually pretty low level. I have the oscilloscope set for 50 millivolts. And once again, this is a basically a voltage equivalent of the current waveform. And so this is off. And then this one on the right is on, is when the washer is on. But important thing to note, this is when the washer is on, but the motor is not running. The motor is the biggest power consumer in the washer. So this is just when the interface is on. And what you're seeing is you get these spikes in current besides just this little half a sine wave. And the reason you're getting spikes in current is because the washer has a switching power supply. So that's typically the current profile of a switching power supply. So the washer is consuming very little current and we can see the spikes that are coming up so we basically have a waveform that's pretty much the same as when it's off, except we have these spikes. So the point is, is we need to be able to measure those spikes to tell if the washer is on or off. Here, the washer is on too. It's actually, excuse me. Here, the washer is on as well, but the motor is running. You can see the current is much higher. Note that here I'm at 50 millivolts per division. Here I'm at 500 millivolts per division. So. Here we're getting up above three volts when the motor is running, because that's when the most current consumption is happening. Here we're just at about, I don't know, 150, 170 millivolts. And then these regular waveforms are about 70 millivolts. So the point though is we need to be able to detect this initial on state when it's not using a lot of current, even though it's gonna be hard to measure because of this little spike. So this is what I did with the oscilloscope. I wanted to see what the current looked like so I know how to program the Arduino. Here's an example capture of the Maker 1000's ADC output. So what I'm using is I'm using the plotting feature in the Arduino IDE, the serial monitor, but it's a plotter. And all I did was use analog read. I used it at 12 bits. 
And I just did a loop where I make 50 measurements, or actually this might be 100 measurements in a row, and then I just print them to the screen. So as you can see, without, without going into the registers and specially configuring the ADC, we can just use the analog read and we're able to detect this spike. And you can see in some cases it's smaller than others, and that's probably just because where the ADC made the measurement. But the good news is, is we can see this spike. So this is when the washer is running, we can pick it up with the Maker 1000. And we're gonna see in the code, what we do here is we basically make a whole bunch of measurements. So if I do 50 measurements, I'm guaranteed to capture at least one pulse, maybe two pulses. And if I do that, I can then search for the highest point. And if the highest point is above, you know, 70 millivolts, substantially above that, I know that the washer is on. If not, that means the washer is off. And that's basically what we're doing here to monitor the current. Now, I will say, you know, I mentioned in part three, this is highly specialized towards my washer. So your washer might be different than mine. This is what the current from mine looks like. You know, if you're using your, your washer and you have a different washer than me, or if you're monitoring a different device, not a washer, you're probably gonna have to take a look at that current profile to understand how to measure it to detect the different states. Okay, let's take a look at the Maker 1000 code. Okay, here we are at the Arduino code for this project. You can see the regular libraries, the Wi-Fi 101 is what we need to use the Wi-Fi function in the Maker 1000. This average library is not something that comes with the Arduino IDE. You have to install it yourself and you can find it online, just search, it's on GitHub. And the idea is I'm gonna use this for some of uh, handling the measurement data. And then this other library is actually a library for the, using the font cloud. So essentially this, this library basically makes the strings that we need to send to the font cloud to log our washing machine state. Here, I, it's a library I made. You can see the files are here. I'll have these on GitHub along with the main sketch, but I'm not gonna go into detail there. I will mention though, that I basically used uh, SparkFun's library. SparkFun has a library for the ESP8266. I basically took some of that code and modified it to make a library for the Maker 1000. So thank you, SparkFun. Okay, here's where we wanna put our Wi-Fi information. I don't, you know, I have your Wi-Fi network and your Wi-Fi password, so you're gonna to need to change these to match your network name and your password, unless by some strange coincidence, this is actually the name of your network and the password of your network. Okay, here also I'll mention, here's my public and private key for the font cloud. You gotta fill in your public key and your private key here. Then in the setup, what are we doing here? We, we configure the LED because I wanna flash it every time I send something to the cloud. Here, this function calculates base value. So this, when you install the, the Arduino on the washer, the washer has to be off. And this function basically gets what the off level current looks like. Because basically, you know, the current may differ a little bit each time, so I wanna have, have the, the Maker 1000 measure it each time it turns on and establish that off value. Here I have serial for debugging. Here we do a check if you're using the Wi-Fi shield, we're not, we're using the Maker 1000. Print out some data that we're about to connect. Here's where we connect to the Wi-Fi network and then we basically loop until the connection is done. Here in the main loop, you can see it's pretty simple code. We're gonna post our data to font. If it fails, we'll, we'll do a serial printout. And then we're just gonna delay for 60 seconds. Uh, I put a note here, I mean, you could use this time to just basically put the Maker 1000 to sleep. I just have a simple delay function. And this function right here is where all the magic happens, where we're gonna post the font. So first we turn on the LED, we establish our font keys, and, and this right here is basically the declaration for the library object. Uh, we add the, the washer state, check washer state, and I'll show this function later, and we give the, the right field, which is the washer state field for basically logging the data to font. We create our Wi-Fi client, we connect using port 80. We then print the font post. So that's basically gonna send the washer state to the cloud. We then check if there's any returned information. We're not using it though. 
We then shut the client off. You want to make sure you do that. You don't want to have too many clients open or it'll stop working. We then turn off the LED and then we return one if everything was successful. Now these following functions are what I use for the measurement. So let me actually go down. Where do I want to start? We'll start here. Largest ADC value. So here I make 50 measurements on ADC, ADC pin A0. Here's where I'm using that average library. So I basically create an average object and I give it a size 50. I then loop and just make 50 measurements and I log them into a array that's you know part of the, uh, the average library. And then I use the average library to get that maximum value from the array. So if you think of that current profile, we have that basically half a sine wave or we have a spike if the washer's on, we're basically measuring one of those, those waveforms and then we're picking out the highest point. And we're gonna use that to know if we're on or off. So remember that, that function that calculated the off state in the beginning when it first turns on, that's this function. So what we do is we make six different measurements of 50 measurements. So we're gonna call this function largest ADC value six times. And each time we're gonna get the highest value from those six sets of measurements. Then we're gonna average those six. So just in case there was some noise or one for whatever reason, one of the measurements was a little off, we're gonna average it and, and establish our baseline. Then we're gonna use this function to get the current values. So here we create another average object. We only do three measurements this time. And we did six to establish the baseline. Here we're just gonna do three. So we grab three different sets of data and each time we're getting that largest value. We then average it together and return it. And then finally this check washer state is where we say, okay, if the current value is greater than baseline plus 30, because we never convert the voltage, we're just using the raw ADC points, so if the baseline plus 30, if the current value is baseline plus 30 higher, is higher than that, I'm having trouble talking, then the washer must be on. So we return true. If not, we return false. So pretty simple. The measurement is the hard part just because we need to know what that current waveform looks like. But as long as we, once we did that, we're able to capture the data and basically easily tell if the washer's on or off. Now, I've tested this a few times. I haven't tested it, you know, for days or months yet. And so one thing I'm curious about, is there ever going to be sort of noisy events that could cause a false reading? So far, it hasn't happened. If it does, what I probably would do is look for outliers when I make my measurement and then just get rid of those. But for right now, I didn't do that because there doesn't seem to be a need. Okay, that's it for part four. I hope you like this project. I really enjoyed working on it and I plan to... Uh, do some more stuff. I, I think there's a lot more I can do with the code. For instance, I could tell you how long the washer's been on. Right now, I'm just telling you if it's on or off. You know, there's probably some more error checking I might want to do, but I'll continue to build on this code and I'll update it on GitHub if I, if I do make any major updates. As I mentioned, if you want to check out the more information on that signal conditioning circuit, here is the name of the video series on that. I think that's a three-part series. And then, if you're interested in using the Node MCU or if you're using the ESP8266, I have another video series where I demonstrate some code for posting data to the font cloud in that using the ESP8266. So if you want to use that, you know, check out this video or the code from this video and it'll show you how to use that to post data to font. All right, if you have anything to add, please use the comment section and thank you for watching.